There's a direct relationship in your life and mine between insecurity and anxiety. They're directly connected. Anxiety is a physical manifestation of not feeling safe or secure. Okay, so when I don't feel safe and secure in my relationships, I'm anxious. When I don't feel safe and secure at my job, I feel anxious. When I don't feel safe and secure in the world, I feel anxious. And constantly, over and over again, we are bombarded with these, these reminders that life's not safe, you're insecure, Be, you know, stay at home, don't go out, wear a mask, wear two masks, wear three masks, you know? Like I saw somebody at the store, like co completely self-contained oxygen tank. I was like, but what happens if you run out of oxygen in that thing? How do you get it off? <laughs> what happened? It wasn't COVID. They just ran out of, you know, oxygen. I, people are just, just going crazy because we're constantly being told in the news and the media and by politicians it's not safe. We feel insecure and we're being scared to death every day. Romans 10, 11 through 13 for the scripture says, listen to this. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame for there's no distinction between Jew and Greek for it is the same Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call upon him. Listen to these words. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now let's talk about that word saved. And then we can talk about why we don't share the gospel. The word saved in the Greek is sozo. Okay, if you wanna write it down in English, S-O-Z-O, -O, sozo. In the Greek, it means physical, spiritual, and emotional healing. Jesus wants to heal everything about you. He doesn't just wanna sa save your soul, he wants to save your emotions. He just doesn't want to save your emotions. He wants to save your physical body. He wants to bring complete healing to you. That's why he said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and give you rest. Jesus is saying, if you're tired of Xanax, try me. Give me a shot. Sozo is the healing of the mind, body, and soul. And so here's the problem today. When you go to the doctor, in medicine, everything is biological. You are a machine, and they're trying to, to, to calculate literally you know, everything inside you to make sure that they can get your hormones right or they can get your chemicals right. They see you as a machine, and they're trying to tinker with that and get it right. But as religious people, let's not just put the doctors down. We think everything's spiritual. You know, you got a broken leg. Let me pray for you. Oh, and we can go to the doctor. You see, listen to me. If you're a doctor and you're listening, there are some things that you can't fix because they're spiritual. You can't write a prescription for a soul. But listen to me, church. Sometimes people need to work through emotions. They need to get with the professional to begin to unpack what it is that they're so anxious about. And what we need is each other. We don't need to say, well, it's just either medicine or ministry, it's both. It's both. So God secures me. Listen, listen to how he secures me. So anxiety is the result of insecurity. God secures me by covering me with his love. Why on earth would he want to cover us? What's wrong with me that needs to be covered? You see, here's one of the great problems of modern society. Listen to this, Romans 10, 11, for The scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. I hear Christian teachers, writers, authors, pastors talk about how we need to completely ignore shame. We never need to talk about shame. And they make this big deal about how shame is not something that we should ever experience or ever feel. Listen to me, the word shame occurs in the Bible 153 times. Apparently, God thinks we need to deal with shame. Listen to me, everybody's ashamed of something. Everybody. It was my birthday this week and my wife was really sweet. So she brought me coffee in bed. Man, there's nothing greater than that, man, right? She brings me coffee in bed, and because I'm a knucklehead, I spill it all over the sheets. <laughs> right, I spill hot coffee all over the sheets. Woo! You know, we gotta jump up, and we gotta rip off the covers. Now, I've been married to Tammy for 25 years. There's not a lot that embarrasses me, okay? There's not, we've, we've had some experiences. We've been on the mission field together. You know, we've had intentional bowel movements and unintentional bowel movements. We've, <laughs> we've had a lot of things. Okay? Like we've raised children together, man. I mean, there's nothing grosser than that, right? 
So Tammy says, oh, we got to change the sheets. We, we, we pull back the covers, and all I see is where I sleep. And I go, good God, and I want to put the covers right back on. Because apparently, I drool maple syrup. I mean, <laughs> like, apparently, when I go to sleep at night, it's just like, you know, sap is coming right out of my mouth. And some of you might sw sweat, sweat, but I sweat like Guinness beer. I mean, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And I just look at her. I'm like totally embarrassed and ashamed. I'm like, I think maybe we need a new mattress. Like, <laughs> like that's gross. And so what do we do with mattresses? Listen to me. We cover them. Because you don't want to see what you're really like. You know what a mattress is? Honest. <laughs> this is what you did. The mattress may be the most authentic piece of furniture you have in your house. <laughs> and if you're not ready to look at the mattress, just pull off the pillowcase. That's where you put your head every night. Oh. For some of you, it would be more hygienic to cuddle up with a possum, okay, <laughs> than to cuddle up with your pillow, right? But why do we cover mattresses? Because we're gross. We're gross. You know, and some people say, well, you should get a new mattress every five to 10 years. We may need a new mattress every evening. <laughs> and so what we do is we cover what we're embarrassed of. And so here's what modern society has done. We cover shame, we cover shame, we cover shame, but we never deal with shame. Here's why your neighbors, your friend, your family, here's why your kids need Jesus, because only Jesus can deal with shame. You see, everybody's ashamed of something. That's why everybody needs Jesus. Listen to these words. All who call upon the name of the Lord will not be put to shame. The only thing that can cover what we're insecure about, what we're afraid that somebody's gonna find out about us, the only thing that can fix the very core of our insecurity is Jesus. That's it. And we can go to counseling all day long. We can go to self-help groups all day long. We can do yoga. We can go on spiritual retreats. We can hum and yom, and we can do all kinds of things. But if we don't cover that which we know deep down inside something's wrong, we're gonna struggle our whole life. And listen to me, parents, those of you who are raising teenagers, this is what happens when, you're, when, you're, when your sweet, loving, beautiful, amazing kid hits puberty. They become very, very aware that there's something wrong. And so we lie to them. And we say, nothing's wrong. You're perfect. That's not helpful. Jesus is perfect. And what's wrong with them is not their nose, their ears, or their weight, or their height, or their width. What's wrong with them is they're a sinner. And they just become very, very aware that there's something not right. And that's why young people today need the gospel. And we don't help them by telling them they shouldn't feel ashamed. Because then all we do is we make them feel guilty for the spiritual re reality that they live in every day. So God secures me by covering me with his love. He doesn't say you're perfect. He says, I'm perfect, and he covers you.